Hello, I'm Elias Zverev, uh, and I spent 12 years doing fun things in OpenStreetMap. Uh, today I'm going to show you one thing not directly related to maps, but uh, something useful I made last summer. I did it basically for the city of Tallinn. Tallinn uh, is the capital of Estonia, named uh, Green Capital of Europe for 2023. Uh, it has lots of interesting things. One of them is uh, free public transport. As in, uh, if you're registered in the city, you don't have to pay for buses, trams, even trains. Besides being free, it's also reliable, almost always comes on time, and routes uh, cover the entire city and they're really great. <laughs> this was obviously a plan to move people from cars to public transport to reduce number of private cars. It didn't exactly work, because with each year we have more and more cars. But uh, it's good enough that I sold my car and uh, for past half a year I rely exclusively on public transport. The problem with it is that uh, to use buses you need to know the routes, their schedules, their route numbers. Of course you can use uh, printouts at the bus stop, but being technical pe people as we are, uh, we better use some websites or apps. There is an official website, uh, Transport Tile Air, that's advertised in buses and for some reason it's advertised on mobile phones. It is not great on mobile phones, uh, because its front page is 2 megabytes and most of it is JavaScript. Not fun. But uh, on the computer it's pretty useful. It can do anything you can think of, uh, plotting routes, uh, seeing buses on the map, uh, watching arrivals for a stop, uh, looking for news for closures and stuff. But uh, when you need to know how to get home, you usually stand outside uh, some shopping center, it's pretty cold and you won't wait for the website to load. You need some kind of an app. There are some options of uh, transit apps, uh, some big like Google Maps, Yandex Maps, uh, Traffy, City Mapper. They can do anything. The point of entry is a big interactive map with a lot of buttons. And you can plot a road by transit, by car. And the problem is, besides them collecting a lot of data about you, is that uh, sometimes they offer to choose a taxi, because that's what they give, get money from. And it's weird. Like, you're going green, you're using public transport, and then you see uh, that your app tells you that there's a way to get there faster and easier, just use a taxi. Mm, not great. Yeah. And there are a lot of uh, smaller apps that rely on open data published by transit agency. They are usually full of ads or are paid and they have very limited functionality, uh, down to just uh, having some tables and uh, that's all. I needed something better. I needed some app that won't uh, cover me with information, but will just straight tell me what to do, where to go, what bus to take, and that's all. And in the vein of open source, you know, if you want something done perfectly, you have to do it yourself. So last summer I set out to learn some mobile development. Well, for multi-platform apps, uh, there are not many options. Most of them rely on JavaScript, like React Native or Apache Cordova. And JavaScript is not the language you would choose <laughs> to develop anything. Uh, so I look for alternatives and there is one uh, that called Flutter. That's an UI library using Dart language. Dart language is small, fun language like Go with the syntax of Java. Uh, it can be learned quite fast. These languages being open source and uh, with pretty high adoption rate, they have thousands 
of open source uh, libraries for virtually anything you can think of. So what I did is throw together a simple app that uh, had uh, a map for near stop and a list of arrivals. The list of arrivals comes from our transit agency open data. It publishes not only GTFS, which is standard transit feed containing stops, routes and schedules, and not only real-time locations of uh, all the vehicles, but also arrival times for stops. Like you know, some stops have uh, these screens that show when the next buses will arrive. Usually they use some uh, real-time data to adjust these arrival times. So if your bus is stuck in traffic, then you'll see on the screen that it's late. The problem is very few stops have these screens, but the agency calculates these arrival types, times for every stop in the city. And that's what I use for my app. I just take nearest stop and print arrival types, times for, for that stop. And I was astonished how immensely useful the app was. It covered like most of my needs in public transport. For example, when you are in the night waiting for your bus, you open the app and see whether it will be uh, in five minutes or in 25 minutes, and you have to look for an alternative. That was amazing and weird that nobody else had thought of that. You know, to make a great app, you need to use it yourself. And I use public transport and still use every day. So I know what I need. I needed to see arrivals and I needed a means to plot a route. I used well-known uh, services like Open Trip Planner for plotting roads and Photon for geocoding. Both of these are very easy installed. They are just Java jar files. I bought a server from Hetzner uh, for three euros a month and that's all. And really that's cheaper than cloud solutions. So when you want to install some web service, think about renting a server from Hetzner or from any other local VPS provider. It might be better than a cloud solution. <laughs> So fast forward uh, a month later, my app is virtually done and I really wanted to brag about the app because uh, despite it being very simple inside, it has some design decisions that I'm proud of. And what enabled them uh, is focusing. You know how some companies have mission statements, like they direct what uh, the company will do and won't do. They allow company to focus. Having that for an app is also very useful because early on you decide what will be in your app and what your app won't do under any circumstances. It allows to focus your efforts, to spend less time on your app and to polish your user interface. And user interface in mobile apps is very, very important, like on the first place. So the focus of my app was here and now. No calendar choosers for a date, no uh, moving a map to choose a starting spot, albeit I did it at first, that was just too tempting. Uh, just uh, you're standing somewhere and you want to know how to get somewhere. And with that focus, the app basically was reduced to roughly six screens. That was enough. Looking for arrivals for nearest stop, uh, searching for destination and looking for routes uh, to that destination. But since it's uh, the geospatial dev room, I will focus on maps because in my app there are four different maps. And that's unlike all the others. Usually it's tempting to make the interactive map the entry point to your app. Everything starts with a map, with a location on it. But when you add interactive maps map to your website, to your desktop app, to your mobile application, 
you make it like 10 times harder to use because very few people really understand and can work with maps. It is, it's like the most complex user interface element and you should think twice before adding it. It is really easy to add. There are many libraries like Leaflet, like the one Ivan presented, like uh, these libraries for Flutter and Dart. You can throw them in the app and you have a map which can do anything. Zooming, panning, adding markers, layers, everything. You save time when you add an interactive map, but you spend time of your users because they will have to learn how to use it. They will have to do a lot of things they didn't intend to do, like zoom in a map. I don't open uh, an app on a phone to zoom it. I just need to get information. So I didn't want an interactive map, like the common one. And hence I got four different maps in the app. That's what I wanted to show you. There's uh, one map uh, on the main screen. It's basically for choosing a stop. You scroll it, stop changes, and you see it's labeled. Like you don't need to know the names of stop stops uh, other than the one that's chosen. So the label doubles for uh, showing selected stop. The zoom level is great. You don't have to choose it. All you have to do is just uh, move the map. When you tap on a route, you see where it goes. There are labels if you need, but basically it's again fixed zoom, uh, which also shows buses that will come, but not uh, that uh, already left. That's important that uh, buses that left, they don't distract you. You have to show as little information as possible. You have to show only important information. A lot of developers struggle with that. It's much easier to just dump all the information you have and make people use it. And that really shows in the most complex screen there is. Uh, route plan. How do apps usually show route plan? They split the screen in two parts. Uh, the map and uh, the description. The map has uh, the entire itinerary, so you have to zoom and look at different segments where you need to turn, where you need to wait. And also the second part is route description with lots of text, uh, with tables, numbers, lines, uh, stop names, and you have to study it to know where, when to get off from a bus, for example. And there's constant switching between the list and the map uh, to understand the road. It's really hard to use. I always struggled with ma making sense <laughs> out of this interface. I need something simpler for my app, but how do I come with it? I had one constraint. One thing that nobody should ever do on a mobile phone is zooming. All the maps have to be zoomed at exactly required level. And if you don't move the map, that's even better. Static maps are the best maps. So what I did was splitting the route in parts. Because at every point you're traveling through just one part. You're either walking or riding a bus or a tram. And the app tells it as it is. You have to walk uh, some hundred meters. You have to board the bus that comes at this time. Leave the bus at this exact point of time. And the maps, they just illustrate. Here's where you need to walk. Here is uh, the tail of uh, the bus route. So you need know when to get off. And when you're actually there, it will show you GPS location. And uh, on this transfer, you have to wait four minutes and so on. So it's pretty useful. I think I never had to uh, move any of the maps, although it's possible, uh, but uh, they just don't obstruct the list. And 
I'm really proud <laughs> of this screen. So what it shows, you have to think twice before adding an interactive map. First thing, can you replace it with a static map? If not, what is the minimum interactivity you can afford to have? Because every extra bit of interactivity, every extra bit of information takes time from your users. And time of your users is very important. Unless, of course, your KPIs include time spent in the app. My KPIs is time not spent in the app. So average use time for my app is like two seconds. <laughs> Most of the time I just open it, look at arrivals and close it again. So yeah, I published the app in September, did a few updates since then. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of users. Most uh, new users were just last week when I went on, on our national television and uh, show, shown the app and ex explained it. By the way, during the recording, I saw um, a presenter uh, for choosing a destination tapping on the map and the, the app didn't support it, but that gave me an idea. So now when you tap on the map, uh, it centers there and also zooms a bit. So with a couple of taps, you can uh, set your destination location pretty easily. I really hope that uh, you will steal my ideas for your apps and that maybe our transit agency will publish another version of their website or an app that will be like exactly like my app so that using public transport will not be as hard uh, as using taxis or private cars because in the end i just want to have less cars on the street if you have any questions or want me to help uh, you with uh, the interface write me and have a nice them. See ya.